how do I, how do I describe you? Uh, Britain's leading expert on coffee, or I Britain's don't. leading YouTuber on coffee, I or don't. Uh, coffee expert? Whatever's fine. I don't. I, I, <laughs> so asking me what I do for a living, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Things. Yeah, I know the feeling. I mean, it's a YouTube. It's a YouTube. Yeah. Just so we say, coffee person, YouTube weirdo. Uh, <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I apologise. I'm with James Hoffman, who has just asked me to call him YouTube coffee weirdo, so... That's probably accurate. <laughs> his words, not mine. Who's going to teach me about coffee, which is something I know... I, I, it's not that I don't know anything about coffee, it's that I haven't really tasted coffee since I was a kid. Okay. Now that was the... Well, that was the setup that was initially interesting. It was like, yes. find your perfect coffee. Yeah. And then there were like a couple of caveats. <laughs> you don't like coffee. Uh, and and sort of not a huge fan of caffeine. So I, I decided when I was sort of 14, 15 that I did not like coffee because I tried coffee and I probably tried, I don't think it was instant, but I think it was, it was fairly cheap drip coffee or something okay. like that. I just said, well, I don't, I do not understand why the adults like this. I'm not going to do it. And then I kind of never really got into caffeine. I decided that wasn't for me either. Okay. So it was just, it was just easier to say I don't like coffee. But like socially, it's nice to be able to accept a cup of coffee from someone. Yeah. It's a thing that clearly a lot of people really enjoy. So I'm like, I want to reevaluate this. I want to, I want to be able to say, I want to be able to make the decision, is this a thing that adult me in my 30s actually likes? And I think if anyone's going to be able to find me something that is not cheap drip coffee. I would hope so. Yes. So, so I worked on the idea that, that Caffeine was mostly out. So 90% of what you're going to taste today does not have caffeine in it, yeah. which made it a challenge. Yeah, yeah and it will have done. Because I know that's, that's a, because decaffeinating things, I looked into the process, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, I'm okay with having, a, like if there's a bit of caffeine in there, I'm fine with that. Like if there's more, if I drink more than about one shot of espresso through the course of this though, it's probably going to... That's, well, we'll see how we go. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So what we're going to do today, okay. We're going to do a little guided tasting, right? Because okay. I'll tell you why afterwards. Uh, we're going to start with with one round to, to assess kind of one aspect of coffee to see how you feel about it. So we've got in front of us three coffees. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what they are because it's not important. We're, we're going to we're going to do a sort of a, a base preference test around coffee. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is is do these as what we would call a cupping, which is the very simple way we taste coffee. There's ground coffee in each glass. I'm going to pour boiling water on top. Yep. They're going to hang out for about four minutes. Okay. Give them a little stir, scoop off the stuff that floats, and then that liquid we can taste. Right. Before I put water on these, just yep. for your interest, mm -hmm. have a smell of each glass okay. uh, and just see how you feel. The smell of coffee to most people is quite nice. Yes. I'd absolutely. be interested to know if one of these smells nicer to, the, to you right. than another. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go and boil a kettle. Okay. Okay, so number one. Okay, so that, I don't have the words for it, but that's, that's, a le that's, that's not a pleasant, that feels like there's a lot, of, a lot of kind of earth, wood notes, things like that. I don't, I, I don't have the words to describe what that is, but the, the word that came to mind was sort of uh, earth. Uh, number two. Wood. If, if, if number one is earth, number two is wood. Oh, number three is a lot nicer. Number three is... Number three almost has a sweet note on top of it. Oh, oh yeah. Wood, earth, wood, slightly sweeter, but I don't know what to call it. So nice. that, it's just quite nice if you yeah. like the smell. That smell pleasant to you, yeah. right? So, boiling water into each of them. So these are uh, freshly ground. Right? Freshly ground. Right. There's a whole process there, which I know you go into great detail about on your channel. Everything can be optimized. Hot coffee is actually really quite hard to taste. Okay. And, and it's a mistake many people kind of make is that, you know, you drink your coffee hot, you want it for the heat, but if you want it for flavor, you won't get the best out of it. And you'll tend to experience things like bitterness a little bit more intensely when it's hot. That can fade a little as it cools down and things okay. get just more interesting. And you'll experience that. So I'll right. tell you now what you think about these when you first taste them will change okay right as, as, right as you go through now when it comes time to taste what i i don't want to do is just throw a load of flavor and experience at you and be like how is that okay 
because that's just too much. The brain is just yeah. like, I don't know. And you get into a very much like a, I, don't, I like it, I don't, I don't know what it is. I'm just, no. So what we're gonna do when we taste is break down sort of single components and compare them coffee to coffee. Okay. Right, comparative tasting is the single best way to learn to taste anything. Right. Right, sitting at home with a glass of wine, mm -hmm. trying to work out what does this taste like? What, what, how do I describe this? Really hard, Yeah. really hard. You might be like, it's a bit fruity. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where you end. Give yourself two glasses, much more fun, uh, but you can compare the two, right? Which one is fruitier? Which one is more yeah. acidic? Which one is sweeter? Which one finishes better? All of those kind of things. That's what we're gonna do here. Okay. To start off with, we're just gonna focus on single aspects of the coffee uh, and compare and contrast those. All right. Okay, I'm just gonna clean these up a little bit now. So when you say clean these up, so is... if we try to drink this now, yep. that's just ground coffee floating on the top. Okay, let's not do that. Which is, uh, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's food, an experience. It's, it's food safe. <laughs> yes. It's just not, it's just not nice. Uh, so what you do is you give them a little stir and this actually causes most of the grounds that were floating on the top to sink to the bottom. Right. And then we scoop off whatever remains. Ah, okay. Leaving behind, uh, let me throw this in here. I assume that the stuff, on, so the stuff on top I feel like is a thing I've seen in a lot of coffees. Right, like the, what the, how do you mean, like the foamy stuff? Yeah, or is that a different, bear in mind, complete novice here. Right, okay, uh, I'll give you the very short answer, which okay. is foam happens in coffee because when you roast coffee, uh, a bunch of the byproducts from the chemistry of roasting is CO2 and gets trapped inside oh, the coffee. Okay. Uh, about a kilo of coffee will produce in its roasting process about 10 liters of CO2 as an anchor. Right. Uh, a lot of that gets trapped in the coffee and certain brew methods sort of bring it out. So espresso is the most famous. 1948, a guy invents a high pressure espresso machine yep. and everyone's like, what is the disgusting scum on the coffee now? <laughs> and, he's, <laughs> and he's like, no, it's natural coffee cream. Right, natural coffee okay. cream, uh, which is a, a beautiful piece yeah. of marketing that, that has, uh, I right. think, transported espresso's kind of uh, brand around the world. Yeah. What we're gonna do, what we used to do was get a spoonful and slurp very loudly from the spoon, yep. aerate the coffee in the mouth yep. and, and sort of turn up the volume. Uh, but then what we would do is kind of give it a quick rinse in hot water and put that same spoon that had been in our mouths back in another bowl. Oh, and let's we not would, do that. Right, yeah. so okay. that's not yeah. what we do anymore. So yeah. that's why you have a little cup. And what we'll do is take a spoonful, throw it in the little cup. Yep. Uh, and then slurp as, as, yep. as rudely as you'd like. <laughs> All right. From so the little cup. All I want you to do as you taste through these is compare the bitterness of one to the bitterness of two, the bitterness of two to the bitterness of three. Right, and ignore everything else. Ignore everything else right okay. now. I just want you to focus on bitterness to start okay. with. Take your time. Don't right. feel rushed by me anyway. So. Spoonful. Spoonful into the cup. Into the cup. A little swirl, cool it down a touch and make swirl. it easier. Cool it down a touch. I'll have another little go on this. Alright. And then uh, have a sip. Now your brain's going to be like, uh, you've got no benchmark yet. So no, I don't. Have a sip. Think about the bitterness. Hmm. Okay. And then... I mean, already compared to, you know, 14-year-old me spitting this out immediately and going, like, clearly my palate has changed because... That's not... You're not upset? That's not unpleasant. It's not pleasant yet because I haven't got used to it, but it's a... Yeah, that's that's a thing. All right. And two. So it's a bit oh, that, That's less bitter, I think, or is it just warmer? No, it's less bitter. Okay, I've worked that out. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. It's, there is a, uh, is a less bitterness in two mm. than one. No, that's almost. My brain almost briefly thought that was sweet. That's well, we'll think about sweetness in a second. Mm. Have a compare, so yeah. benchmark that bitterness in your brain. Yeah. Number three. Number three. Swirl it round, let it cool down a moment. Now, I don't know whether my taste buds have just been blown out by those first two, but that barely tastes bitter at all to me. It is pretty, pretty barely bitter. Yeah. Right. And people have an expectation of coffee's flavor, that it, it is this big, right. harsh, mean mm. thing. And so most people reach for milk or they reach for sugar because they want to temper that bitterness. And milk, right. is, milk is an amazing thing. It's one of the few natural bitter blockers out there. Most coffee needs milk and sugar. 
right? Most okay. coffee that you will drink in the world, yes. I would recommend <laughs> tempering it because most coffee isn't very good compared to how good coffee can be. Right. Now, you said sweetness, so let's go the other way again. So okay. let's go three, two, one, yep. sweetness comparison. Right? Okay. How does the sweetness of one, or sorry, of three compared to the sweetness of two? Okay, right. So focus three. on that. And uh, the spoon does not touch the cup. There is, there is an air gap there. That's it. Must go still a little bit for me. Oh, spot, spot the person who used to do computer security. Mm -hmm. Air gap. Right, uh, so we're looking for I sweetness. Know what that means because I watched Mr. Robot. <laughs> now, sweetness, oh, yeah. sweetness is a tricky word, right? Because mm. you will have coffees that taste sweet but do not taste sweetened. Right, yes. so the moment that I added a sprinkle of sugar to that, you'd be like, oh no, that's sweetened. Yeah, that's... And instead you're looking for a kind of pleasant characteristic, a kind of natural sweetness, but not a sugary sweetness. Right, and I feel like there's a bit of that in there. But I'm being very uh, non-committal on that, just to, because uh, I don't know what to compare it to. All right, number two. It's hard to taste above the bitter note there. Mm -hmm. Well, so take yourself back then to the first thing you tasted that you were surprised by. Yeah. How, do, how does that now stack up now that you've got I a I feel like there's a sweet, no a sweet note in there, but I only got it on like the last... I'm, I, I'm second guessing myself here. I feel like there was a sweet note in there towards the end when it was starting to get cooler. All right, let's do number one. So this was bitter. Or, so this was or, the most bitter of the three. So does it also have that sweet note in it? So I don't think it does. I don't think it does either. Okay, that's, that's right. <laughs> I keep us, like, I feel like I'm guessing. I feel like an imposter here who is magically guessing the correct things because I don't know, uh, if I were to rate them, I'm not sure about these two. That one's definitely not got a sweet note here. I feel like two might have had more of that. Interesting. But I'm not sure about that choice. I, I think they're pretty close in terms of sweetness. I, th I think, um, I feel like I'm at the opticians and somebody's got one or two, one or two. <laughs> I absentmindedly finished off that, you know, I, I, there was more in the cup, I just kind of sipped. That was really pleasant. Well, that's it. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to go one more yep. sort of characteristic at this stage, right? Okay. Which is, I want you to pay attention to acidity just quickly. Just it's taste each one okay. uh, and tell me which one you feel has the most acidity to it. All right. Number one. Number two. Oh, definitely more in two than one, because I know what I'm looking for here. More than anything, like I know what flavour I'm trying, what what profile I'm trying to match in my head there. Three, yeah. but only uh, two definitely has some, mm -hmm. but I feel like three definitely has more of that sort of vinegar citrus bite to it. Do you like it? Yes, and so. I, I would say, uh, I would infer then that this is probably your preference of these three yes. from a sort of tastes perspective. It's got a hint of sweetness to it mm -hmm. and less bitterness, but it's also got that acid bite. Right, so from this, yep. I now have a good benchmark of kind of what you're right. into. What yep. we're gonna do now is refine that through another round of tasting. Okay. Round two is no longer about sort of taste. So the first round was really about, you know, bitter, sweet, acidity. Um, how do you feel about those? How do you perceive those? How do you enjoy those? Right. Here we're going to focus much more on flavor, which is okay. a little bit more challenging because then you're into sort of finding the words in the wine tasting and the hints of wisteria yes. or all of that uh, sort of stuff. Don't worry too much about that. We'll, we'll pick it apart a little bit more in a second, but that's what we're going to do. So uh, if you want to have a little smell, again, right. just compare and contrast. Number one. Um, See how you feel. Hmm. <laughs> I don't have the words, you're right. No, it's okay. I'll give you some words later and they'll be hopefully satisfying. I don't want to say floral. Floral is the wrong, but plants. Yes. Which is an obvious thing. It's coffee, it's a plant. That's not a helpful word, but. Wood bark. Okay. Oh, oh, what's that? That is, that's a memory from something. 
I almost want to say berries. Mm -hmm. I don't know what berry, but that's the note. You're saying mm-hmm, and I can't tell if that's if that's thinking I'm mad or thinking that. I can't I can't skew you too far one way or the other. Oh, um, spice. Specifically, uh, almost like the the vinegary thing you get from kimchi or something like that. A kind of fermented note. Yes, yes, that's the word, fermented. All right. You you are scoring big points. Am I? You're scoring okay. big points. I'm going to get a kettle. You're okay. scoring. You're doing very well. <laughs> I found a skill. <laughs> this is good. So far, doing things where I'm outside my comfort zone, I haven't found skills. And now, yeah, yeah. your your coffee tasting language is very good. Okay. Right. Flavor. Right. It's hard. Yes. And that's okay, right? Okay. So don't don't beat yourself up about those kind of things. So you start initially, do that kind of initial assessment. Okay, how does this feel? Mm -hmm. Has the sweetness, has the bitterness, has the acidity? Swallow and then sort of think about what's left filling your head. Right? What, what kind of flavors? Like that. Yes, okay. that's the sort All of right. easiest time. Number one. Right. Just a quick taste mm. through. Number one, not pleasant for me. Okay. There's some note in that. I would go with earthy. Yep. Not sure it's the right word, but I'm going to go with earthy. I, I, it doesn't I could, work for me there. Yep. And, but, but that as a flavor is quite appealing to a number of people okay. in coffee, right? So that, that is quite a desirable characteristic. It's a bit of a Marmite flavor. Yeah. Um, not literally, but... <laughs> not literally, thankfully. Uh, Number two does not have that. I'm trying to work work out if it just feels like they're, hang on. That feels like number one, but missing that note. Okay, now that, I'm not sure there's anything there to replace it. Number one tasted like coffee to me. Yep. Number two tasted a little bit more like someone has introduced something to some hot water and infused it a bit, and there's not okay. enough flavor. That almost, that was almost felt weak to me. Now, it is in part because it's really hot. That's true. So this will improve in flavor as you go down. Oh, I don't know, that's splashed everywhere. Oh, what's that? Number three has a definite note to it that, ah. Uh, it's not vinegar, it's something close to that. It's something, I need, I'm gonna try number three again there. There's something in that I need to place. It's not citrus, it's something like that. There is... Right, it's a sort of acid dominant, quite mm. sort of fruit acid flavor. Yes, I remember smelling that and saying berries. Okay, all right. And number four was the one, I don't want to like preempt what my brain's gonna say here, but number four was the one where, where I was thinking fermented notes. Yeah. Yes, but that's too hot, hang on. That's all right. Yes, that is, that's the same thing. I know it's not kimchi and it's not gonna be the same exact flavor, yep. but that's the same note. Definitely, I'm not sure. So one, one I would write off as just an unpleasant note. That earthy note is not for me. Of those, I think I prefer number four. Yep. If you, if you gave me a choice, I'd go for that. But both three and four are very pleasant in different ways. There's no sweetness in there that I can detect, or at least quite, quite low. Three has a bit of it. Yep. Four replaces that with that kind of fermented. Place. Yeah, it, it's sort of more of a, you get a kimchi, my brain would really go more into the world of kombucha and those kind of ferments. Right, which is not something I'm familiar with. That okay. explains why. Okay. Whereas kimchi, I, I, you know, not to be, you know, kimchi often has a kind of lactic acid um, yes. quality yes. to it. I think it's a lactic ferment, um, which is a different sort of acidity to me than that, which is a little bit more sort of citric still, like it's still mm. a fruit acid in there, but it's sort of a fermented fruit. Yes. Quality to it. God, the water almost tasted sweet for a moment. Wow. <laughs> now, this is for me wonderful because one, you, you've clearly tasted the differences. Yes. You've accurately absolutely. tasted the differences. Yes. You've expressed preference quite easily, which yeah. is definitely useful. Um, I was a bit mean. How, how would this compare to say the, the one you liked in the first round? I... So number three in the first round and this, 
Do you, do you have a preference between the two? Are you going to reveal they're the same one? Or, uh... Yeah, they are. Yeah. Of course they are. Interesting. Because um, that feels weak to me now. That feels like you watered it down. It's context. Right. So the, the flaw in how we taste in some ways is yeah. that we are very much contextual. Right. So and so when you produce something yeah. very big, very heavy, mm -hmm. you compare it. Now, there's a fun little game. Go backwards. So start here, okay. go to here, and go to here. So number four. Right, very strong fermented flavor off that now. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay, now I can definitely taste fruit acid in that. Wow, okay. That way round, I prefer the second one as well. Interesting. Going that way, prefer the fourth. Going that way, prefer the third. And this, which of course I now know is the one from earlier, right. which is going to change my perception as well. But... Oh! Man. Does not feel weak anymore. Right, so you've gone from actually quite a light bodied, yeah. but high acidity thing to a little less acid, mm. but a bit more texture, and suddenly it's there. Now, if you yeah. go to here again. Oh, this is gonna just, this is gonna be very strong now, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that, whatever that flavor is, whatever that note is that some people like, I do not. This is one. I don't particularly enjoy coffee that mm -hmm. tastes like this. Some people really prize that heaviness, that earthiness, that lack of acid, those yeah. kind of flavors, they, they really enjoy them. Um, this is the one from the first round, so we'll, we'll, we've yeah. talked about it. It's very nice. I think it's just it a very is, enjoyable think, Going thing. that way, that's the one I enjoy the most. Interesting. But it's, the le it's not the most interesting, no. it's just very friendly. Yes. That, the number four is interesting. Yeah. Number three is, it's okay, but going either way. I feel like there's not, compared to these two, those two stand out to me. And this is kind of somewhere in the middle. In the middle. That one's, that one's interesting. That one is just pleasant. But I am so aware that a lot of that is based on me now knowing that that's the one from the third round that's what I'm looking for and going this way into it. Right, it's, yeah. it's, it's a lot of its context. And, mm. and you can mess with people and it's quite fun to yes. mess with people. Um, this one here, People get very confused when they drink coffees like this because they're like, that's not, that's not really coffee anymore. Like, what is, that is a fruity, if hot you, thing. If it turns out one of these is, is actually ground tea, I'm going to be really frustrated. None of them are ground tea. It's all coffee, I promise. So what is number two? I'm going to just check, because I feel like this is the one, which given I wrote it off as being weak earlier is a really strange thing to say. It's not. It's, it's I mean, that was one way you were sort of tripped up by what was around it, mm. semi-intentionally. Uh, yeah. because that, I think that contrast is really interesting to sort of understand what you're tasting. But I think of, of these, yep, yeah, definitely that one. Would you say, you, you, do, you, do you like the taste? I think this, I, I do not dislike the taste, yep. but my immediate thought is that it would, is it would be better tempered with a little bit of some sort of dairy or equivalent, and a little bit of sugar. It's absent of defects in a way. It doesn't have any harshness, there's no bitterness, there's no unpleasant flavors there. There's a kind of core, kind of coffiness to it. It is, it is the basic person's coffee. No, no, I no, 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 no. not at all, not at all. Like, it, it, it is, I think, probably my preference on the table too, if I was to, to be like, what am I drinking right now? I mean, I, right. I lean towards this a little bit, but I like that a lot too. It is just very drinkable, it's mm -hmm. nice and sweet, it, it feels nice to drink. What is it then? Uh, it's a coffee from Colombia. Right. This is a good example of the style of coffee that you would buy in most modern coffee shops, actually. Huh. Um, so, you know, the kind of wave of sort of modern specialty coffees, we talk about it. That's a very good example of the kind of coffees that we've been trying to get people excited about. All that's left for you to do now is taste this some more. So what we're going to yeah. do is we're going to make this as an espresso. Right. As a cappuccino. Okay. Or a little milk drink of some sort. Yeah. And as a filter coffee. Okay. Right? And you can sort of understand a bit more about how you like to drink. Now you understand what you like to drink. Yeah. Now we can do how you like to drink it. And then you'll end up with your kind of drink should you want to go to a coffee shop and order something. So after a 
after a break, yes. um, where, where the baristas upstairs have, have made some things. They've made some things. I know that's espresso. That is espresso. Because it's a tiny shot and a tiny glass. It is. I'm going to guess flat white. Uh, cappuccino, okay. a little bit more texture, a little bit more yep. foam. Yep. Uh, and then I was going to do just just a brew of the decaf, but right. I thought because you seem a little bit more open to caffeine, I can take, yeah, yeah, I can take uh, I've added something yeah. of a similar style with caffeine to the list. Okay. Right? And it's not really a blind tasting anymore. Okay. But it would be difficult. A, a chance for you just to kind of assess how you like your coffee made. All right. So I would say, here's your espresso. Yep. Give it a I'll stir first. It. It's uh, oh, that. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. See the foam's dissipated a little. It's so they stir the foam back in. Well, it's, not, it's actually at the bottom of the drink, there's more dense um, liquid than at the top. So as oh, you okay. sip it, the drink would change. But if you're going to have one sip, forget it, makes it a little, right. nice, a little easier. So, so this is decaf espresso yep. with the be coffee I, I chose. Okay. Pretty intense. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. So. Huh. <laughs> I can see why people like this. And, and as someone who likes like strong flavors, I can suddenly I see why people like this. Yeah, okay. good. It's good. Would happily, I won't. We've got a lot to go through. Right. And I'll probably want to come back to that to compare. But I'm, I'm really. In, it, mm. It's surprising to me. Many people are like, okay, that's I get it, but it's too much. Like that. It's a lot. I'm not. Uh, there's a, there's specific times when I would want that, mm -hmm. but I have no objection to that as like decaf. Decaf espresso is now absolutely on, on drinks that I will go, yes. Yeah, if you're offering, I'll, I'll have one of those. Have a little taste of this. You can give it a stir too, just to mix in that foam and-, and I'd quite like, can I just try the- Just go, just Try go. the foam on top first. This, there's no- Because there's there's no... I can always mix the foam in later. So this is, ca uh, cappuccino is foamed milk right. on top of an espresso, is right. that right? So you're going to use this as a sort of shot of flavoring. Right. And then we're going to dilute it back to a more normal strength yep. with sweet, delicious- And this is, this is, this is basically, all milk with a shot of espresso in there. Yep. Okay. Oh. Huh. Okay. The foam's nice. Huh. I mean, that just tastes like a coffee milkshake to me now, which I don't think it would have done before today. I think I'd have been so overwhelmed with the bitter notes and the coffee notes. That's all I. But that's. It's a great breakfast drink. That, yeah, it is. Ah, oh, I like coffee now. You do? <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take that as a win. Yep. Mm. That's so nice. You can see where that's, people are. That's are lovely. That is so nice. All right, so and um, the other two here we have. Now here, I'll pour you a little bit of yep. each. Uh, one of these is caffeinated. One of these you've, so you've tasted really before. And one of them uh, is is a sort of similar-ish coffee in style, but caffeinated. All uh, right. So you should, in theory, now you might me, recognize. I can, I can notice a difference there, and it's going to be really difficult to tell. I don't know if this is a, this is a brew process. I, I don't know if the camera can pick this up. The top of this is very smooth. There is no imperfection or anything on top of it. The top of this one has a little bit of clouding, a little bit of yes. some sort of thing on top. Almost like there's a little bit of an oil slick or something there. So let's see. So this is the one without that oil, that little bit of oil. Hmm. That doesn't do much for me. It's not unpleasant. It's... Well, again, you're coming from a... Yes. It's, you started very strong. Yes. Then you went to very rich and sweet. Mm -hmm. And in contrast, this will suddenly feel lacking in comparison. Yes. But it has a little juiciness to it, a little acidity to it that's quite pleasant. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Let's try the other one. Different taste, definitely. Don't know what the note is. What's interesting to me is I picked this as a coffee that's relatively similar to the decaf one that you liked, right? But coffee is extremely diverse. Coffees from right. neighboring farms taste different the same way that neighboring chateaus produce different wines. So I can't replicate it mm. exactly. I can sort of just get the stylistic ballpark. So it's a similar-ish level of acidity, similar-ish level of texture and sweetness. This one I prefer. I, I think that is a very enjoyable mm. coffee. I think this is enjoyable coffee. I yeah. think this is, I can't taste it, but I would presume yeah. intense, fun, almost overwhelming, but mm. like you can uh, understand the appeal of wanting to stand up in a bar yes. in Rome and have a little espresso yes, and move on can, with your day. And yeah, 100%. Oh yeah, if I, if I ever go to somewhere that's known for good coffee, yeah. that's what I'd order. Even if it's decaf, that's what I'd order because this feels like an experience. It is like 
order it. The best comparison I've got is hot sauce or something like that. It's right. like ordering something with a lot of hot sauce in because there is so much flavor and so much going on. Whereas, yeah, this, I, I will happily just have this. This is really nice. That's lovely. I just like the idea of taking you from, I don't like coffee to espresso. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, James. You, you've taught me to like coffee. That was, the, that was the goal for today. So I feel like I, I, I take that box. Uh, I'm kind of relieved. I was genuinely nervous that you were just like, this is all disgusting. I don't like anything. And then... So was I. That would have, to be fair, that would have probably been more entertaining for the audience. Yeah. No, this is, I, I got a new thing I like. Thank you very much. My pleasure.